little longer than before I want to lift my hands higher than before I want to shout a little louder than before I want to shout a little louder than before
give them a big praise right there where you're at. Amen. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome this morning to Sunday morning service, Fire and Water International Church. We'd like to invite you and welcome you this morning and say thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Wherever you're at, around the world, here in Phoenix, wherever you're at, thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited. Excited to get the church open again, and we're going to start it tomorrow night with prayer tomorrow. What a better way to start it. What a better way to reopen the church doors than coming together, praying together, worshiping together, blessing his holy name. So tomorrow we can't wait to see you. We're excited to see you. And if for whatever reason you, you still feel you're still not comfortable, that's okay. You can pray right there where you're at at home. Pray and know that at 7 tomorrow we'll be here for prayer night. And if uh, if you want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. You're, you're, it's, it's, we're trying to keep guidelines. We're trying to follow instructions, using wisdom, making sure nothing else happens. But tomorrow night, tomorrow night, church doors will be reopened Wednesday for life groups. We'll be here once again for Bible study. And then next weekend, Next Saturday and Sunday, our first service is back next Saturday and Sunday, 6 o'clock on, on Saturday, 10.30 on Sunday morning. Invite somebody. Come on down. Let's worship the Lord together. Pastor Robert, let's keep on worshiping God. And right there where you're at, if that's you, if there's no more shackles, if you've been set free, worship him like you mean it. Worship him like you, he's done something. Worship him like he's changed your whole life around. And there truly is no more shackles for those that are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord.
Come on now, right where you're at. Lift up your hands, lift up your voices. He's worthy of all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We are thankful people here this morning. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your love. Oh, we love you. We bless your name. Bless your name here this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Oh, you've been so, so good. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for what you've done in our lives. Oh, if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for you, I know for myself I wouldn't be here right now. And this morning we say thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your precious blood that you shed on the cross for us. Thank you. When we wanted to give up and others gave up on us, you never gave up on us. Oh, you've been so, so good. And we come with a heart of thanksgiving here this morning. A heart of thanksgiving saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence here this morning, your holy presence. For we know in your presence there's power, there's victory, there's breakthrough, there's restoration, there's turnaround, there's victory, there's healing. We thank you for your presence going around the world right now, your holy presence touching every single person. And we pray this morning, not one of us to walk away from this service the same way we started. Touch heal deliver strengthen increase the fire and the passion and the hunger for you increase the compassion for the hurting the poor the afflicted the addicted and the lost that will never be the same and that we keep the thing the thing the people that you came for you came to find that which was lost in jesus name and everyone said amen praise the lord is just for a few minutes here we're gonna we're gonna prepare for the word here in a little bit we're gonna worship the lord just we're gonna do another song here just to prepare our hearts for the word what a sweet presence of the lord here this morning good morning everyone god bless you thank you for joining us thank you for joining us thank you for trusting us with the things of god here at fire and water international church we love you praise the lord and we are excited as pastor tony said earlier we are reopening the church um, tomorrow night and we're starting off and we thought what a great place to start with Monday night prayer. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. So we're going to start with prayer Monday night, our prayer service, prayer, prayer night starting at seven o'clock phoenix time phoenix arizona time 7 p.m look forward to seeing everybody um connecting with everybody praise the lord 
and praying together in person praise God and I believe we're coming back stronger than ever before stronger than ever before we're gonna pray like we've never prayed before and just um, just looking forward to it and and, and I believe um, um, we are gonna impact the world around us like never before for the glory of God so Monday tomorrow night we reopen praise the Lord Wednesday night we're gonna continue this coming up Wednesday night with life groups um, so 7 p.m. we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night and then we're gonna move into Saturday and Sunday next weekend many are asking and calling and even right now um, asking about um, when are we opening up church services again next weekend next Saturday 6 p.m. Saturday night service 6 p.m. Sunday morning service 10 30 a.m. Um, so next weekend uh, look forward to seeing everybody amen my wife just wanted to and I I, I, I just want to go uh, just um, uh, uh, re, uh, just share this as far as um, as far as we want to use wisdom uh, we want to do the possible God does the impossible amen and we want to proceed with um, being responsible also as we reopen up the church and she just wanted to make sure that it's remind everybody um, the first thing she wanted me to share praise the Lord she's at home with our little one Gracie we had a long night last night our little one we just we couldn't put her to sleep she was fired up last night she wanted to go for a walk she wanted to play she wanted to read books she was everywhere praise the Lord amen um, so basically as I told my wife last night <laughs> I, I said last night she runs the house amen Gracie without a doubt is in charge of the house amen praise the Lord she runs it amen and um, so I got home last night and I had just gone to Subway and got a sandwich and I was like man I was just really hungry and uh, and and Sheila was have, making some food there and Gracie wanted to go outside amen she wanted to go outside this is like I forget what time it was it was like 9 30 I, I, I might be off a little bit it was 9 30 at night or something and um, she wanted to go for a walk around our, our, our little complex. And um, so guess what? We put the food to the side and um, we went for a walk. Amen. She's like, boots, boots, boots. She wanted to put on her boots. And we walked around and uh, came back into the, into the, um, um, back to our place. And then um, it was on after that, reading books, doing, we just, you know, it, it, what a blessing she is but she runs the house amen praise the lord that's all i'm trying to say gracie is in charge amen praise god but um so they're not here today they were going to come here today and sheila was going to share a little bit but they're at home um resting and watching online praise the lord sheila baby grace we love you love you baby praise the lord babies my babies amen praise the lord um but she wanted just to for me to share this if you'd like to wear gloves if you'd like to wear gloves when you come to church don't worry about what others think whatever makes you feel comfortable amen so if you want to wear a mask and you feel please wear a mask if you want to wear gloves wear gloves amen so whatever makes you feel comfortable praise god um, number two when checking your temp temperature uh, make sure you check your temperature before you leave the house if you're not feeling well and if it's over a hundred degrees um, we want to encourage you to watch the service online amen um, take care of yourself rest drink lots of fluids and by the blood of Jesus Christ amen you're gonna be just fine amen but let's use some wisdom let's make sure we take care of ourselves and use the wisdom that God has given us amen and um, number three if you are experiencing any type of symptoms from the coronavirus please proceed with caution and um and and and, and, and more than likely you're, you're not even dealing with it but just think if you're you know you have a cough or you're you're just you know you're you're getting some of these symptoms we want to encourage you um to to watch us online during as we reopen and um and just um and, and take care of yourself and and uh, and rest and and when you feel better and uh, then you know proceed and come to the church we look forward to seeing you amen so let's just use some wisdom and uh praise god as we move forward for the glory of god amen praise god um let me say this also uh, that um again what what a privilege and what an honor it is and i think as we return back to church i think all of us 
I think I'm speaking on behalf of all of us. Um, you know, sometimes we get comfortable and we get, you know, we take, we, we take for granted what we have in this country. And it's amazing. It's like all of a sudden when we were, not, as soon as we weren't able to come to church in the physical, after a few weeks, it was, it was kind of like, oh my goodness, you know, I, I, when is the church going to open up? I want to get back to church. Amen. Uh, I think the revelation w was, was how blessed we are and also the importance of coming together in fellowship, um, worshiping together. Uh, so I just believe when we come back that the church, the church in general and Fire and Water International Church, um, the body of Christ will never be the same again. Uh, uh, knowing how good God is and not taking for granted the blessings of God, the church, and the brothers and sisters that are in the church. Amen. I think I just, it's, it's, it's just, uh, we're not going to look back. We're going to move forward with a greater fire and a greater passion and a greater hunger like never before. So praise the Lord. Amen. We love you. Um, also, um, as we reopen for the first couple weeks here, um, for the time being, we just want to get started. We just want to start moving in the direction of opening up these services in our, in our life groups and our prayer meetings and our regular services. We will not have, for the time being, just to start off with child care or children's ministry at this time. We just want to take a step of just opening up the services and the prayer meetings. And also, no breakfast ministry on Sunday morning, the breakfast fellowship. Um, we're going to do that at a later date as we just um, we move forward and we start little by little. So, um, so again, no breakfast ministry and no children's ministry as uh, when we start off. Eventually, we will reopen that also, the children's ministry and also um, the, the child care and uh, the breakfast ministry um, when the time is right. And also food boxes. Um, starting next weekend, we're back on schedule. Food boxes will be available immediately after each service. Saturday night service right after the service and Sunday after the service as we've done in the past. So we're going back to that schedule. So we will have food boxes available for you or for anybody you might know that might need one um, or has need of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience during this stretch. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your support. Um, God bless every one of you. And we so look forward to seeing everybody back at the church. Amen. God bless you. Let's worship the Lord right now and prepare our hearts for the word. Amen. God bless you.
Yes. Yes. Right now, in your home, I want you to take off your shoes right now. Because we are going to see, we are declaring right now that the place that we are in, whether you be in your home, whether you be with family in another home, whether you be at church, no matter where you are, you take off your shoes. This is just a symbol of what it is. You are declaring that you are walking on holy ground. Hallelujah. And where he is, he changes the atmosphere. He changes the environment in your home. Yes. The word of God that is inside of you, the word of God that might be laying on a table or in a cupboard or in a drawer, that word of God is life. It's life and it's holy. And right now, yes. You know what, right now? Right now we, take our, we need to take off our shoes right now. Hallelujah. We gotta live right now. Come on. Hallelujah. We gotta obey the Lord right now. Oh, Come on. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. come on, come on. Under this anointing right now, yes. I believe this is an instruction of God right now that we're following. Hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. And I know right now yes. that we minister to many prisoners right now. Yes. And you may be thinking, how can this be holy ground? Look at all the ugliness that happens in prison. But just as Jesus walked the earth, holy, perfect, we are his body. We are his hands. We are his feet. Yes. So we walk across that yard. And when we declare, Hallelujah. chains yes. fall, hey. fear
Hallelujah. Just your glory. My God. Hallelujah. I see chains breaking. Chains are breaking off people's lives. Freedom and liberty. Heaviness is going. Depression is leaving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some breakthroughs taking place right now. That's the Lord right now. That's the Lord right now. To Him be all the glory and all the honor. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's happening right now. Yeah, it's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now. The chain of poverty is falling right now. Right now. Jesus. You are the provider, Lord. You are the provider. The chain of confusion is falling right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off right now. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. You are the peace. You are the peacemaker. showing your glory to this earth right now you're showing your glory across this nation right yes, now yes 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 oh shake off you, those chains shake off those chains oh you're no longer bound by what they say you're no longer bound yes. by what they do to you it's only by the blood of jesus It's over. It's over. No one, no one will ever see you as perfect. Jesus. But I'm telling you right now, there is a perfection that the eyes of Jesus sees on us. And then it's when we are turned completely and surrendered and un undone by Him. That is when He sees and looks at us and says there is my perfection because they were created in my image you will never be good enough for man but you are always going to be good enough for the lord you are always going to be good enough come on for the father of the fatherless the hope of every nation you are always going to be good enough come on to stand in his presence hallelujah hallelujah no one else declares who you are Jesus, you change everything. only he only he has the authority to call you my son my daughter because he loves us because jesus paid the price on that day you are good enough i don't know who i'm talking to right now but i'm telling you that if you just lift your hands up to the lord and if your heart cries out to him heavenly arms of our Father wrap around you and you will know what true love, unconditional love, amazing love feels like. It is something that only you can feel from the blood of Jesus, from the arms of Jesus. this morning run to him this morning 
His arms are not short. He holds us all. The Father holds us all in the palm of His hand. So you are good enough. You are worthy to come before Him. And let Him lavish on you. Thank you, Jesus. You may have never have felt what that feels like. But God is reaching out this morning. He is ready with his arms open wide. And he's ready to lavish on us, his children. Hallelujah. His daughters. Yes. His sons. Because that is our highest calling. Yes. Is to be a sister to you. <laughs> and to love you as my father loves you. Jesus. Hallelujah. He is holy. Jesus. He is holy. Hallelujah. Awesome. 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 Hallelujah. And I see right now the word that God's given me for some right now is it's over the thing that you're going through the thing that was trying to take you out pull you down God says it's over that door is shut and when God shuts a door he opens up a new door that no man can shut I want to encourage you to move forward walk through that door that's God's plan that's God's purpose that's God's destiny for you he's opened up that door he's the one that just shut the door right now from what you've been going through it's shut it's over it's over right now just at home to say it's over it's over in Jesus name and God's opening up a new door and your best days are ahead for his glory he's crazy about you he's never given up on you and he's got a plan and he's got a purpose for you he's got a plan and he's got a purpose for you and what he's doing here today and the thing that tried to take you out God is turning around today's miracle in your life is for you to walk through this new door God's will God's purpose God's plan God's destiny for you and your miracle today and what God's done and what God's brought you out of is for you to be a miracle in somebody else's life to be a blessing in somebody else's life to be a solution in somebody else's life to be a champion for him to say to others follow me as I follow Christ I know the way to victory I know the way to breakthrough I know the way to healing I know the way to restoration I know the way follow me to peace and joy and victory and restoration run to Jesus right now hallelujah Lord we thank you for your presence apart from you we can do nothing but with you we can do all things hallelujah hallelujah we give you all the glory we give you all the honor all the glory and all the honor all the glory all the honor all the glory and all the honor to you thank you Lord for touching your people thank you thank you
all to you. All the glory. All the glory. We bless your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor. someone else yes no longer will i give it to something else mm. it's only yours only yours jesus forgive that's us that's my only hope forgive us i can't find it in anything else you're my only hope so i've got to put you as number one in that If I want things to change in this country, in this country, we've got to put you number one in this place. In Jesus' name. If we want it all to change in every state, every city. Oh, I'm crying out for you, Lord. Every I'm city, crying out to every you state. For my family, for my city. Yes. For my church. Come on. Oh, for every one of my neighbors. Oh, oh I'm crying out for you, Lord oh God. I'm We're crying in the gap out right now. We're standing in the gap. Oh Come on, make that your prayer right now. Make that your prayer. Only what you want. Your will. Your way. Give me the 
Hallelujah. Just rest in him right now. Watch. watch this, watch this. When we look at things from our point of view, what you just said right now, watch this. This is when we when we when we look at it from 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 ourself, self. This is how we see things. This was something that was written to me from a prisoner. Um, and he sent this to me and it starts off by saying this watch this I am very ugly so don't try to convince me that I am a very beautiful person because at the end of the day I hate myself in every single way I am not going to lie to myself by saying there is beauty inside of me that matters so rest assured I will remind myself that I am a worthless terrible person and nothing you say will make me believe i still deserve love because no matter what i am not good enough to be loved and i am no position to believe that beauty does exist within me because whenever i look in the mirror i always think i am as ugly i am i am i as ugly as people say And as I read that, 
And I was reading it. I'm like, what is this? This is like, because uh, 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 he had written something else beforehand, before I, um, this, 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 this poem here. Or this, and, he, um, and he was saying how God was touching him and how he's, you know, moving forward for Jesus. And, and then I'm reading this and I'm thinking, what is this? But then there's one more line. And he says this, now read from the bottom up. Now read from the bottom up. You just, as you're just praying right now, as you're saying, as we're worshiping and you're saying, when, when, what others are around us and, and how we see things and what people think and the way we look from our point of view. But when we put him number one, when he's on top of the list and we get his vision, his vision, watch this. This is the way we start to operate. This is the way we start to walk. Now watch this. Now it says read from the bottom up so I'm gonna read it from the bottom up now and watch this am I as ugly as people say because whenever I look in the mirror I always think beauty does exist within me and I am in no position to believe that I am not good enough to be loved Woo! because no matter what I still deserve love and nothing you say will make me believe that I am worthless, terrible person. So rest assured, I will remind myself there is beauty inside of me that matters. Woo! And I'm not going to lie to myself by saying I hate myself in every single way because at the end of the day, I am a very beautiful person, so don't try to convince me that I'm very ugly. Woo! That's when you get the vision. When you get God's vision, it changes everything. It changes everything in your life and the world around you. Woo! That's a word. Let's put him number one on top of the list that's where the victory is that's where the breakthrough is that's where the hope is that's where your peace is that's where your joy is and no matter what anybody has to say or think when he's on top of the list and we got his vision for our lives all that matters is what he says and what he thinks about you. And what he says and thinks about you is he's crazy about you. He loves you. He's got a plan for your life. It's not too late. He's a miracle working God. He's a restoring God. He's a God of breakthrough and turnaround. And there's still time for you to go forward and be the champion that God's called you to be. To be the man of God that God's called you to be. To be the woman of God that God's called you to be. Because when you get the revelation that God's crazy about me, that he died for me, shed his blood for me, that he loved me so much, that he went to the cross for me when we were yet sinners, when I was yet a sinner, he died on the cross for me. You get free from what people think. You get free from the world's system, the world's way of thinking, and what people have to say or think. And your next step is dictated by the plan of God in your life, the vision that God has for your life, that God's with you, that God loves you, that God has a plan for your life that God wants to forgive you as far as the east is from the west and the things that were trying to take you out God's going to turn around and use it for his glory in Jesus name amen 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 praise the Lord amen Lord we thank you for your presence we thank you for your presence In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Just gonna. Wow. Praise the Lord. I just. I'm reminded here by the, the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, is reminding me that we can plan. We can plan, and it's good to plan and prepare for a service. But how important it is when we prepare and plan, then when we say, Lord, your will to be done in this service today. This is your church. This is your people. We say that all the time here. This is your church. This is your people. But we have the tendency sometimes that we pray that prayer, but we don't allow God to move or change the direction of a service sometimes. And we stick to the program. And the program uh, is not a bad thing. It, it's, it, it's God's in the program. But the God's saying, listen, you guys planned. You did well. You got your songs. Okay. You, announcements. All these things. But if you truly allow me to have control of the service, I want to do something far greater. I want to exceed your expectations if you just will allow me and be sensitive to my spirit. Don't worry about time. Because when somebody's struggling, someone's going through something, they're not worried about time. They're just trying to fight to not give up. To not give in. Looking for an answer. And God's saying, if you're sensitive to my spirit and allow me to move in the direction that I like to move in, that's where the increase happens. That's where the breakthrough happens. That's where the healings take place. And to, today, I'm saying all this to say, to say, to, to get to this point. When we're worshiping, we're talking about holy ground and take off our shoes. The Spirit of God immediately got a hold of me. And as we're telling everybody to take off their shoes, it's not the shoes that, it wasn't taking off the shoes that, that brought a breakthrough or healing, but it was the obedience to follow the instruction of that moment. And I was sitting there and I was thinking to myself, I kept on hearing over and over and over and over. Well, if you're telling the people to take off their shoes, you need to take off your shoes. And I'm thinking, well, and that's when I turned around and said, let's all take off our shoes. And I believe because we we're willing to follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Many have been touched by your obedience, by following the instruction. Because in the midst of an issue that we're going through, every time there's an issue, God will always give instructions in the midst of an issue. And how we follow the instructions in the midst of an issue that we're dealing with will dictate our miracle, our breakthrough, or lack of. I believe great breakthrough has taken place. Great victory has taken place already here today because we followed the instruction of the Holy Spirit. And this is what we need to get back to in the church. That when we say, God, you're in control, that he's truly in control. To let him have his way in a service. And when he tells us to do something, that we do it immediately. Immediate obedience. Because it's an immediate obedience that comes great, great victory and breakthrough. I want to start off, which is going to be brief this morning. Our text today is going to be in 1 Chronicles chapter 13. 
Now before we begin to dissect the Word of God in chapter 13 or dive in to the Word of God in 1 Chronicles chapter 13, it is imperative for the foundation to be solid for our text today to begin first by saying, and I believe this is a word for us today in our nation and in this world. I need to begin first by saying this. The chapters prior to this text lets us know that David has become king over Israel. And his first decision was to put God, watch me, see how God, see how God brings the service together? His first decision was to put God first on top of the list. I wrote, it's right there. I wrote it down. His first decision, my God, I feel a presence of God. I feel a power of God right now. His first decision was to put God first on the top of the list. I wrote it just like that. For his nation. For David understood that unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. He understood that if God is not the foundation, if God's not the foundation in our government, if God's not the foundation in our schools, if God's not a foundation in our cities and in our states, eventually it will come down. If it's not built on God, if it's built on something other than God and the heart of God and the principles of God and the word of God, eventually it will come down. Psalm chapter 33 verse 12 says this blessed is the nation whose god is god is lord the people he chose for his inheritance blessed is the nation whose god is lord blessed more than happy More than happy is the nation whose God is Lord. And David knew that this was God. That it was God. And David knew that it was God and his presence that brings success, that brings blessing, that brings victory, that brings healing that brings deliverance, that brings joy, that brings wisdom, that brings protection, that brings guidance. He knew it was God and His presence. His presence. His presence. The Bible says it's not by might nor my power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And in chapter 13, one of his first actions in the Oval Office as president was not to deal with some of the issues that were taking place within the nation. And I'm sure there was many things that he had to deal with as president, decisions he needed to make and adjustments that needed to be made. And just like today in our nation, today, so much that's going on, so many things that we're dealing with. But his first action according to chapter 13 of first chronicles was to bring honor to god by returning the ark or the presence of god back to jerusalem Woo! because he sees he understood that there's decisions that needed to be made but if god's first his presence was first that if he honored god first then God would give him the wisdom to make the decisions that needed to be made. See, that's what we need today. The solution, the answer to the issues today. The issues today. Because there is answers. There is solutions. His name is Jesus Christ. 
And if we run after him and his presence, he will give us the wisdom on what to do, how to do it. He will give us the plan and the revelation and the ideas and if it's a vaccine, a vaccine. If we go after him, if God wants to use a vaccine to take care of something, God will give it. God will speak to somebody. God will open up somebody's mind straight from heaven. If we go after God, if we go after God first, if we go after God, or maybe it's not even a vaccine, it's a byproduct of going after God. God just takes it out completely. However, God wants to do it. Because if we have, if we put Him first and we seek His presence, He gives us the wisdom on what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do, when to go, when not to go. God, I'm saying something. It all comes back to God being on top first. I'm reminded of Matthew 6 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first God's way of doing things. If we seek God's way of doing things in our families, God's way of doing things in our churches, God's way of doing things in our government, God's way of doing things in our cities and in our states, things will change for his glory. Ooh. David knew that apart from God, he can do nothing to be successful. He can do nothing without God because it was God that brought him to this place. He knew that God was the one that protected him, that kept him, that provided for him. He, he, it was God that brought him this far. He, he knew apart from God, he can do nothing. And my friends, apart from God, we can't do anything. So his first action was focused on God and to return the ark to Jerusalem. Mm. Now the ark of God is also called the ark of the covenant. This was the most sacred object of the Hebrew faith. It was a large box containing the stone, the stone tablets, on which the finger of Almighty God Himself had written the Ten Commandments. Whoo! The Ten Commandments, the Word. And in the process of returning the ark back to Jerusalem, the first attempt, watch me now, I'm trying to get us somewhere. The first attempt, his heart was in the right place. The focus was on the right place, but the first attempt was not successful. It failed. The first attempt failed. Why? Why? What went wrong? Why was it not successful? Why was he not successful? And we find the answers, the answers in, to, this, to this failure. We find the answer to this failure we find the answer to this failure in first chronicles in first chronicles chapter 13 starting in verse 7 watch this watch this put on my glasses first chronicles chapter 13 verse 7 8 9 and 10 why did he fail what went wrong? They moved the ark of God from Abinab's, Ab, Ab, Abinab's house on a new cart with Uzzah and Ahil guiding it. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God. 
with songs and with harps and ears and timbrels, cymbals and trumpets. So there's an excitement, presence of God, first action as president. So it seems like everything's on course, everything is right. But then watch this in verse 9. When they came to the threshing, threshing floor of Kedan, Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because the oxen stumbled. Mm. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah and he stuck him down. He struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. So he died there before God. The mission failed, the Bible tells us, Uza touched the ark. He touched the ark, and you might say, well, what, what, what's wrong with that? He touched the ark. He was not a priest. He was not a Levite. And only a priest or a Levite was allowed to be near the ark. He was not a Levite. He was not a priest. And he touched something that he shouldn't have touched. Only the Levites were responsible to move the ark, watch me now, on their shoulders with poles through its rings. Numbers chapter 7, verse 7, and chapter 7, verse 9 lets us know. Only the Levites were responsible to move the ark on their shoulders with poles through its rings. Not, watch me, not on a cart. I'm going to say it again. Not on a cart. The Levites, priests, were set apart to do the work of carrying the ark and many other responsibilities of the church. They were set apart to do the work of the Lord in the holy things. Watch me now. I'm trying to bring this home here. In 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Look at somebody, if there's somebody next to you right now, or speak to yourself, shout, that's me. Because when you said yes to Jesus, the Bible tells us that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Whoa! That's who we are. New Testament. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 7. Verse 17 says this. I'm trying to get us somewhere and I'm almost done here. I have a word for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Watch this. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Be ye separate. We're a royal priesthood, chosen generation, a chosen people. And the Greek word for separate, be ye separate, aphorizo, is to mark off from others by boundaries. Let me give you the dictionary meaning. To disunite, disconnect, or sever, or to divorce. To separate, to come out from among them. Bible says friendship with the world is hatred towards God. God said, for I am the Lord thy God that brought you out of Egypt, the type of the world. I brought you out, not to go back. Now open wide your mouth and I will fill it. We're in this world. We have a work to do in this world. God has a plan and a purpose. God has not called us to be in this world to take up residence, to get comfortable, but he has an assignment for every one of us. We are chosen people, a royal priesthood, on assignment from God to carry 
We are carriers of the presence of God. We carry the presence. When we said yes to Jesus, the presence, resurrection power, the presence of Almighty God came into our hearts. We are carriers of the presence of Almighty God on assignment to impact the world around us, to lead them, to point them, to help them, to lead them and to point them to Jesus. To let them know there is an answer, there's a solution, and his name is Jesus Christ. But to be effective in this mission, he says, come out from among them. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. You don't operate by the world system and the world's way. When you said yes to me, you operated, you operate from my kingdom's point of view, from my system, from God's system, God's word. You're of another kingdom, and there's a work to be done, and we're passing through, and our job is to bring as many as we can with us to him. Now watch me. So the assignment failed. The assignment failed. The assignment failed. Let me say like that. Because the ark, it was never to be touched. And bringing the ark on a cart followed the Philistines' example. That's how they did it. In the past, the Philistines. And it failed. Because it wasn't supposed to be touched. And also, it wasn't, it was, it was mishandled. There it is. This is what, so what am I trying to say? What's the word? The presence of God was mishandled. And because it was mishandled, it was mishandled. The mission, the assignment failed. The presence of God was mishandled. So what's God trying to speak to us today? It's what I believe God put on my heart. Uzzah. Touching the ark. In other words, touching the glory. God says, I'm a jealous God. And my glory I don't share with anybody. The cart and the oxen. Uzzah. What, what can we learn? What is God saying in this hour, this season, this moment? That God is saying is this. That's what God put on my heart. The, the Philistines operated like this. Symbolic of the world. Symbolic of compromise. Symbolic of laziness. Instead of carrying it the right way, they put it in our cart. Symbolic, the Philistines, symbolic of lack of commitment. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm saying something. They mishandled the presence of God. And what God is trying to do, and I'm bringing it home right now, what God is trying to do in this hour, through everything we've been through in the last couple months, is to try to get the attention of the church, to try to get the attention To try to get the attention of you and me, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. <laughs> and he's trying to get out of 
our hearts out of the church, the spirit, this Philistine spirit that has invaded and infiltrated our country, has infiltrated our churches, and by doing so, we've mishandled the presence of God. And by mishandling the presence of God, the world around us, our neighborhoods, our cities, and our country has suffered because of it. Whoo, Jesus. Because it starts with the church. I opened up earlier today. If my people who are called by my name, if my people, that's you, that's me, if my people, where God says you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. So the world changes when the church is where it's supposed to be handling the presence of God, the things of God, the right way. And what God's trying to do here in, these, uh, in, this, in this season, as everything is shut down these last few months, is to try to get the attention of the church and to return the church back to its first love. Back to a, a place of commitment. He's trying to get that spirit, that Philistine spirit, where we've allowed the world, the thought process, the, the system of the world to impact the church instead of the church and the presence of God impact the world. We've had compromise. Someone said, come on, Pastor, what are you trying to say? I mean, our churches, and you're, I, 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 praise God, I, I believe there's many churches that are on fire for God, but God wants to take us further and higher, and he wants to bring, her, bring us to a greater level of commitment, a greater level of, of sacrifice, a, a greater level of focus. But the truth be told, come on now, the truth be call, told, uh, Philistine spirit has invaded the churches, because when you have same sex, I'm going to say it. Because someone's saying, well, come on, what are you talking about? I mean, everything's, churches are, same sex marriages in church in the name of God. The spirit, this Philistine, this, we've mishandled the presence of God. It's just one example. It's just one example. Things that were unthinkable have now become common practice. The Word of God. Because we don't want to, we want everybody to like us. And, and you know, not everybody's going to like us. Now, they should not want to like us because we're being mean or we have the wrong spirit. We should have the love of God, the mercy of God, the patience of God with people. But when you truly are handling the presence of God, a church is handling the presence of God. A child of God is handling the presence of God the right way, putting him first, completely committed and sacri committed to sacrifice and and. and his agenda, his plan, his purpose. Not everybody's going to like us. We're worried about what people are going to say and think and how people are going to see us. When Jesus and his ministry, people loved him and people wanted to kill him. One minute they're shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. The next minute, some of the same people are saying, crucify him. 
What am I trying to say? If we're doing it his way, and we are following the instructions of God, the word of God, and we have him first, not everybody's going to like us. Not everybody's going to be with us. Be worried when everybody loves you. Because if everybody loves you, and there's no, there's no attacks, there's no opposition, something's wrong. Because when you're living for God, and you're standing on his word, and his truth, it goes against the system of this world. It goes against it, and not everybody is going to be with you. And God's looking for a church. He's looking for a people that will rise up in these last days and not compromise, not pull back. He's trying to get out of us, as I said a few weeks ago, what he's trying to do, get this Philistine spirit out of our hearts and out of the church. What he's trying to do is get rid of part-time Christianity in our lives and bring us to a place to move forward, to be full-time, all the way in, whatever it takes. His will, not our will. When Uzzah touched the ark, it's also symbolic. When you think about it, he touched the ark. Here's what God put in my heart. When he touched it, when he touched it, that's him taking things into his own hands and going in front of God. His thinking, himself, touching God's trying to get rid of self, self-centeredness, our way, our will, our agenda. He's trying to get rid of that out of us and out of the church. And God's trying to bring us to a place of his will, his way, his agenda, his cause, why he came to this earth to find that which was lost. They mishandled the presence of God. I said earlier, I think it was a great example, the way we went in a different direction in the service. The church today has gotten comfortable. Instead of carrying the ark, they put it on a cart. I want to go to church, but I don't want to be uncomfortable. I want to go to church, and I, I want to serve, but when, when, when it, but when it starts to affect my schedule, when it gets a little uncomfortable, I'm willing to do it as long as I put the ark on the cart. Woo, Jesus. When it doesn't feel good, when it's not comfortable, and God is watching me now. God is trying to bring his church back to a place of understanding that if we're going to make a difference, that things are going to change and we're going to impact this world, he's trying to bring a church out of this season that will understand that sacrifice will be demanded. We're going to have to let go of some things that ne might necessarily be a bad thing. But he's saying, do you want to go higher? Do you want to reach the people I died for? Do you want to fulfill your mission and your assignment? There's some things I'm trying to get out of your heart, out of your way, so I can be on top of the list, so you can be everything I've called you to be, so you can be the man of God I've called you to be, to be the woman of God I've called you to be. And if you do it my way, I'll take care of the rest. I know what you need. When you need it, I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. But in the midst of it, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be comfortable. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you something. There's a message. It's going to cost us something. Anything worthwhile. 
anything that's going to last comes at a cost. Jesus laid down his life and went to the cross for you and me. But what followed was the resurrection. But there's always a cross before the resurrection. We need to pick up our cross and follow him. And if we're truly following him, it's going to cost us something. You might lose some friends. But you might, watch this, you might gain them in heaven someday by standing and speaking the truth. Or not even speaking, but just the way you're living will be our seeds that are planted in their lives. When you don't compromise your faith, when you don't cross over into the world that God's brought you out of, but you keep on walking and following Jesus, they might not, they might not be talking to you, but they're watching from a distance as you follow Jesus. You are telling them, follow me as I follow Christ. Even without saying anything, they're watching. They're listening. They're watching from a distance. And it could be the difference between life and death by the way you stand and stay committed. I was looking for a church. It's not going to have, it's not looking for the easy way out. That will stay with it. Because it's not comfortable. You know, carrying the, carrying the ark and putting it on a cart. There's a difference. <laughs> when you carry the presence, there's a cost. We need to come back. God's trying to bring us back. Where he's number one. When we come, we serve him with all our heart. Whatever the need is that God places in front of us that we're willing to serve with all our heart. The Bible says the greatest among them is a servant. God's trying to bring us to a place and bring us out of part-time Christianity into full-time Christianity. In other words, prayer meeting on Monday night should be the most attended service in the church. With all the promises that go along and all the scripture that God's given us on prayer. Church services. We've adjusted our services. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. How can we get more people to come? How can we make this easy for them? How can we make it comfortable for them? Let's get them in. Let's get them out. Let's make sure it's comfortable. Let's make sure that it's not too long. Someone told me. Someone told me. I got to say this. I got to say it. I'm just reminded of it right now because this is, this is what God's trying to do. Get this spirit, this Philistine spirit out of the church. Someone told me. Christian. Well respected in the community. Well known. In the community. Told me. When I preach. This wasn't too long ago. So this is after all these years of ministry. In this church, the assignment that God's given me, the people we're reaching here that are, watch me, contemplating, they're coming in off the streets, out of prison, hurting, dealing with addictions, dealing with taking their lives. And this person comes in, this spirit, this Philistine spirit. Woo, Jesus, I'm going to say it. Look, just say it at home. Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. When you preach, you don't have to preach for so long. You could still get your point across in 20 minutes. So this guy is telling me how long to preach the word of God to the people that God's entrusted me with. So you, because what he was saying was, 
when I come and visit, you go too long, and I'm trying to go to lunch. Okay, praise the Lord. That's the problem. And why we're where we're at in the society and in this nation, because the church has mishandled the presence of God. We plan for other things. We don't check our clocks, our times for events, for special events, for dinners, for movies. And we're gonna, and someone's gonna come and tell me how long I should preach. So you mean after 20 minutes, I need to dismiss everybody? Let's not have an altar call. Or better yet, people get uneasy when we have altar calls sometimes. Because how about if someone, God forbid, someone speaks in tongues? We might scare them. Yeah, we might scare and get some hell out of them and get them to come to Jesus. So if I stop at 20 minutes, how about when God says, keep preaching on this and stay on this because it might not be for the rest of the church, but there's one person in there that's contemplating suicide and what you're about to say right now is gonna, it's gonna set them free. It's gonna heal them. It's gonna, it's gonna break that chain, that, that spirit off their lives. And we're worried about losing people. And maybe they're big givers. But guess what? God's trying to get that spirit out of the church, out of the people of God, for us to put him first. Because if we handle the presence of God the right way, he's our provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. Amen? Now, he uses people. He uses our jobs and things like that. But he's our source. He's our provider in Jesus' name. Amen? We need to get back to preaching the cross, preaching the blood of Jesus. Altar calls, salvation. We need to get it back to going after the presence of God. And then, watch this, and then getting out of the way and letting God have his way. Because what we need today, because in the early church, what made them effective and affected and affected the rest of the world was not their wisdom. It wasn't their personalities. It wasn't their eloquence of how they dressed. What made the difference and they were successful and effective with their assignment was the power of God was with them. The power of God was in the church. It was undeniable. They lifted up the name of Jesus. They preached the gospel and God confirmed his word with signs and wonders. We need to get back to the simplicity of the word of God. Back to the, the simplicity of the word. Preaching the word from beginning to end. The truth of God. Back to the cross. Back to preaching the blood of Jesus. Amen. And letting God do the rest. Amen. We do our part. God does the rest. Back to lifting up his name and pointing people to Jesus. We need the power of God, the presence of God in our churches again. And we're not going to get that with 20-minute messages all the time. We're hurting people. We're responsible as a church that we've minimized this thing. Come in, get a little nice little word, give my tithe, everything's good, and people are still struggling. People are still not living the way they should be living. God is not on top of the list. But the deception is, I go to church on Sunday, I put in my 20 minutes or my one hour, and that's fine if that's what God wants to do in that service. But we need to get to a point, you know, I went to, well, it was in Uganda. 
and here's the difference. Went to Uganda. And before I preached, they were worshiping and praising the Lord for two hours. And then when I walked in, when they brought me in, everybody stood and said, here comes the man of God. Not honoring me, but honoring the office that I represented. They were so hungry for God to hear the word of God. I preached for two hours. And then we had an altar call that went on. And nobody left. If anything, it seemed like more people showed up. And God moved with power. It wasn't my eloquent speaking. I can't even speak right. I can't even finish my sentences. But I preached Jesus. And God confirmed his word with power, breakthrough, deliverance. Undeniable move of God. That's what we need to get back to if we're gonna if we're gonna see a change in this world. If we're gonna see a change in this world, we need the power of God back in the church, off the focus. We need to get rid of the spirit, this Philistine spirit that puts the focus on our on our titles. Here we go, and I'm done. I gotta go. I can't believe I'm still pre. I thought I was done. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you all right? We need to get the focus, this, this spirit, this Philistine spirit that puts the focus on self, the focus on our titles, our focus on our denominations, our, 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 and we need to get our focus back on God. When we talk more about ourselves and more about our churches instead of God, instead of Jesus, instead of the cross, God's trying to wake us up. We're mishandling. We've mishandled the presence of God. We've turned church into a show. Instead of it being the trauma center, we need, the church has become a program. And God will use it to some level. But we're not seeing all the fruit of the victory in the world around us changing because we need the power of God back in the church. We need to become the trauma center that God's called us to be. That people know, if, if I go to that place, that church, that the doctor's in, that God's going to touch my life because of the testimonies that people are hearing. And when they leave the church, that they're not talking about the pastor, they're not talking about the church name, but they're talking about Jesus and the encounter they had with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's when we know we've handled the presence of God the right way because we pointed everyone to the cross. We pointed everybody to Jesus. We pointed, we pointed people to the solution, to the one that washes us and cleanses us and forgives us of all our sin. We've pointed them to the one of grace and mercy, the one that apart from him we can do nothing, but with him we can do all things. That's when we know we've handled the presence of God right. They're not talking about anybody. They're not talking about the, the church name. They're not talking about the pastor or anybody else. They're talking about the encounter they had with God Almighty, with the presence of God, the encounter they had with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I believe what God is saying is there's hope and everything is taking place because all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose that everything we've been through in the last couple months for the church especially God is trying to bring us back to our first love doing it his way that it's truly his service and his way to come back to church again and in the church building to handle the presence of God the right way 
with greater commitment, with a willing spirit of sacrifice, a heart to be a servant that's not looking for credit for themselves, not looking for pats on the back, but looking to serve God with all their heart, wherever the need might be, so it can glorify his name and impact the people that need him. That we come back with a greater fire, a greater passion, a greater focus, and being free from what others have to say or think, but to do it God's way all the way. God's trying to get this spirit, this Philistine spirit, out of our hearts and out of the church so we can become the church that he meant for us to be that the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee that people will run to the church because they know when we get to that church or that place that you're going that healings are taken people are being set free people are being saved that there's a solution and let me tell you something when someone's struggling they need a touch from god or they're struggling with an addiction or they need God to touch them physically. Their life's about to fall. They want to give up on life. And they know if I can get to that church, that God is there. It doesn't matter how far it is. It doesn't matter how long the service is. It doesn't matter because if they know that's where the solution is, they're going to come. My friends, I want to encourage us. Let's go after God. Put him first and trust him. And I believe great increase and the greatest harvest of souls are going to come into the kingdom of heaven in the days and months to come like we've never seen before. Trust him. Put him first. And watch what God would do in Jesus' name. Just lift up your hands and say, I receive it. Let's be great for God together. Let's make every day count. Time is short. We don't know when our time is up here. Because eternity is forever. Death is not the end. It's only the beginning. Let's make it count. We only get one life on this earth. Let's make it count for his kingdom. If you're at home right now and you might say, Pastor, man, as the word's been going forth in this service today, there's some things that have been in front of God and I want to make him first in my life I want to live for him I want to do it his way from this point on I'm tired of doing it my way if that's you right now the Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved God loves you and it's not too late Maybe you've been in church before and you're like a prodigal son or daughter that's left. This is his grace. This is his love. There's time. And I believe as you call upon his name today that you're going to come back stronger, more on fire, more focus, and you're going to reach many for the glory of God. So if that's you right now, I want us all to pray this prayer together. Just pray this prayer together. Heavenly Father, I need you. I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I believe you sent your son Jesus to this earth for me. And those who call upon his name shall be saved. Jesus, I call upon your name. Save me. Help me. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for putting other things in front of you. For putting myself in front of you. I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord and Savior of my life. From this day forth, I'm all yours. Use me for your glory. I thank you today for you, for your grace, for your mercy, for the cross and the blood that you shed on the cross for me, your precious blood. And I believe, because your word says it, I believed it and confessed it, that today I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven, and my best days are ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you prayed that, 
I want to encourage you from this day forth, get plugged into church, get involved, get around the right people, put yourself in a place of victory because you can't be in a place of defeat and be great for him and impact the world that's around you for his glory. God loves you and he's got a great plan for your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us. Again, we'll be back here tomorrow night. Doors are open. Monday night prayer, 7 p.m., reopening up the church. Don't forget Wednesday night, life groups, 7 p.m. And then next weekend, the church is open for Saturday night service at 6 p.m. and Sunday morning service at 10.30 a.m. Come on. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's reach the world around us for the glory of God. Let's reach the world around us for the glory. Let's finish strong for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
God's bringing me back to this because I, I feel it like right now. Someone that was listening earlier is saying, you were talking about Uganda, but Uganda is not the United States. Things are different there than they are here. So pastor, when you're saying they were worshiping for two hours and you preached for two hours and then there was an altar call, their circumstances are different from ours. So that's unrealistic for us to do here. The devil is a liar. Watch me. That's, that's the spirit, that Philistine spirit that we are squashing today. Your pursuit. Listen, listen. Your pursuit. The things or the things you pursuit, whatever your pursuit is of something, your pursuit of it reveals your heart. Your pursuit. Whatever you're pursuing, in the end, reveals what's in your heart. And whatever is important to you, you will make time for it. You will rearrange your schedule for it. Let me say it like this. Back in the day, whoo, back in the day, before we were saved, for many of us, we would work all week long, 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever it might be. We would go out at night. I remember the day during the week, I'd have to work the next day and the following day, but there were, it was happy hour, there were specials. So it's like, well, it's Thursday night and drinks are half off. So watch this. So it was my pursuit revealed my heart. My pursuit was to go to happy hour. <laughs> At that moment, that's what was important to me. So I made time for it. The reality was I should have went home, went to sleep, rested because I had to go back to work. I still hadn't finished my work week. Had to get up early in the morning. Six in the morning. Sometimes it'd be five in the morning. But because it was important to me at that time, even though it was destructive and it was taken from me, money, health, sleep, <laughs> I would go, close down the bar, be upset that the bar was closed, went home with a couple hours of sleep, wake up go to work here's the crazy thing but it was still so important to me the next day because everyone was getting together the next spot the next area each day had a certain place that we had planned that, that, that had specials i'd go back to that place how insane do it all over again and still have to get up the next morning even though it was taken from me and hurting me now this was before Jesus but isn't it amazing the same people today that's how we are when we weren't with the Lord with lack of sleep we throw our money away buy drinks for people that we don't even like wake up the next morning early to go to work do it for multiple days in a row but when it comes to the things of god we look at the clock we look at our watch gotta go home can't make it to prayer because i gotta watch this can't make same people that used to live like that come on now we gotta get rid of this spirit of this philistine spirit out of the church and out of the people of god same people we we come to church but then we can't make it to a prayer meeting. I'm not talking about some other things that, I'm, that there's, there's some people that can't make it for certain reasons. I understand. I'm talking about when we're at home, but the answer or the conclusion is I got to work. I got to be up early in the morning. We'd go out night after night after night. 
and we can't allow God to interrupt our schedule went to church on Sunday that's enough and we can't let God interrupt our schedule for one night to pray to pray to stand in the gap because we got to get up in the morning I got to get rest and the reality is we're not even going to sleep early I'm just speaking come on now let's be honest for some of us we're just sitting at home laying on the couch flipping through the channels Certain games on, certain movies on, certain programs on, can't miss this, can't miss that. The voice is on. Oh my. Woo! And then we wonder why the world is where it's at. Then we wonder why we're where we're at today. But thank God that a lot of this stuff has been stripped from us to get our attention. Let's not lose what God is trying to impart to us during this season. Amen? Let's be great for God. Whatever is important, we make time for and God will help us and bless us for doing so amen, amen. it's time to rise up church amen. it's time to do this thing amen. to handle the presence of Almighty God with reverential awe yes. Yes. to handle the holy things yes. with reverential awe and his heart Come on, lift up your hands and turn Come on, voices. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, and all. Lift up your voices. Come on. first I should say God said to put him first and that's what surrendering is all about let go let God surrender I surrender 